Hi FEI Riding Superstars, my name is Natasha Altoff and I'm a Grand Prix dressage rider from Australia and this is my home. So let me show you the Riding Success Institute in Australia. <laughs> So excited to be bringing you a series of videos to help you in your riding and help you get to the next level, whatever that looks like for you in your dressage. Before we get into the riding videos, I wanted to record a quick introductory video so you can get a sense of who I am, what I'm about and what my story is. So I first started riding, well, I was young. I was really, really, really young and I loved horses. Just my parents couldn't get that out of me. It was, you know, ever since I was like five and I could learn to, and I learned how to write, my parents would be like, okay, well, why don't you write down what you want for your birthday? And I'd just write down pony, pony, pony. All I wanted was a pony. So when I was a little girl, I wanted a stable full of horses. Doesn't everyone want a stable full of horses? And I'm so blessed and lucky and fulfilled that I have a stable of horses that not only I get to ride, but I get to have everyone else experience to ride as well. So we're very lucky at the Riding Success Institute to have a stable full of FEI horses that everyone can come and ride and have lessons on. So this is Wessel, who I compete in small tour. Hi Wessie! And you can see he's actually quite small. He's nothing to look at in the stable. I know when I look at him, I'm like, oh! Um, but he he's, feels like he's 19 hands when you ride him and he's got movement of 25 hands. Um, but he's got a beautiful character, beautiful sweet, and he's very nice to get along with. That's why he's kind of in the middle of the stable block. And then he gets to go next to the big boys. So this is Arba's stable. Yes, Arba also is very chatty. He likes to be around a lot of horses. So he's next to a gelding and a stallion on the other side. He's stable park actually says, Ebony Park Arba, the best stallion in the world. Opposite him is the tallest, um, pony we've got. So yeah, we've got the big ones and the little ones. This is Minnie, very appropriately named, and he does lessons. He's um, trained to small tour and um, he does lessons and he's very, very, very cute. Very cute. But my kids do lessons on Arbor, not on Minnie. Go figure. And now we've got two more beautiful Frisian heads looking at me. Now, I don't know how you guys are. For me, I can instantly look at my three stallions and know who's who. Ollie is the prettiest one, I think. Yes, I do think you're the prettiest one. He's just got the smallest, prettiest head. And um, he's got the most attitude. He thinks he's the biggest, like him and Arbor compete on who's the biggest stallion on, and who's the coolest kid on the block. Q does not know he's a stallion. He's five years old and he just has no idea. Do you, beautiful man? He's very kind, very soft, very just cool as a cucumber kind of horse. Um, but he's really hot and forward and a little bit crazy to ride. He's not crazy, but he's really, really hot. Whereas these guys, Ub's the laziest and Ollie's, you know, still laid back. So they're just, they're all interesting. I just love every single horse in here has a story and it has a different personality and a different, different way of going. My very first horse was a gorgeous Arabian cross called Tyson. He was 14, three and three quarters that close to 15 hands and I thought he was the best, cutest thing in the world, the prettiest thing in the world. Um, he had that beautiful flaxen mane and tail. Then we decided to go to pony club. And then my competition side kind of got turned on. And I remember, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm at grade five pony club. I need to be at grade one pony club. How do I get to grade one? And I thought the grade one pony clubbers were Olympians. I thought they were the best riders in the, in the world. And all my mission was to get to grade one. At that time I was also growing taller, by then I was 15, 16 and I'd grown out of good old Tyson and I decided to do what everyone does in Australia at least, get the off the track thoroughbred. So I got a black off the track thoroughbred and I thought this is it, I have arrived, I have my black beauty, my black horse and I'm going to go to the Olympics. And I thought I was going to go to the Olympics for eventing, that's what I wanted to do. But I didn't realise that the jumps get really, really big and really, really high and really, really wide. And after a couple of years of venting, I realized it really wasn't for me. I did a lot better in the dressage series. This led me to finding a dressage horse. And I remember thinking at the time, okay, well, I need a dressage horse. But I kind of got confused when I was thinking about that and got sidetracked by an ad that was for a Frisian cross, um, Frisian cross thoroughbred that could bow. 
And I thought, that's cool. And I ended up like, I'll buy it, because it could bow. Um, so then I had this bowing, a supposedly dressage horse that I was going to train to Grand Prix by myself. And this was the gorgeous Tambo, and um, he and I went on such a journey together and such an adventure together. I did not know what I was doing. He did not know what he was doing. He was a four-year-old, um, and I trained him all the way up to Inter 2. We didn't get to do a Grand Prix start, but we did do an Inter 2 start. And um, every mistake, every everything you could think of, I did on that horse. And um, it was an amazing journey that we got to take together. And, I got things wrong a lot and he got things wrong but mainly he didn't get anything wrong, I got them wrong. But he taught me how to train and how to think outside the box and he also fostered and sparked this love in me of the Frisian horse. So then it became, okay it's time to get another horse, what am I going to get? And I said I need a Frisian stallion because who doesn't need a Frisian stallion in their lives? So it was all about Black Beauty, it was all about I want to be a princess, it was all about a Frisian stallion, but I still wanted to go to the Olympics. I still wanted to become the best dressage rider in the world. So it was like, okay, I've got to combine a Frisian stallion and the Olympics. And I remember, you know, that, that was my mission. I went out, I bought some Frisian stallions, brought them, brought them to Australia, and that was my mission. And I actually became the first person in Australasia to train a Frisian to Grand Prix. So that was the beautiful, amazing, Arba, who's now 20 years old and coincidentally teaches my children, who are four and six, how to ride. And now fast forward to where we are today. So we're in this gorgeous institute, the Riding Success Institute, which has been in my brain since I was about nine years old, but didn't come to fruition until I was 36 years old. <laughs> when I was younger, I wanted the dream tack room. I don't know if you were like me, but I had my horse kept at an adjustment and the tack room was the car. I had to take my saddle out of the back seat of the car every day and put it in the garage. And then when I wanted to ride, put it back in the car and take it to the car. Our feed room was the car boot. Like we had it in the garage and then I'd take the prepared feeds into the car. So I didn't even have my horse on my property. And all I wanted was the tack room that they talked about in the books and they talked about in the movies. So let's go in and see. So I wanted it really, really easy and really, really clean. So every horse, it was clear what was everything was for each horse. So every horse has a name tag, their saddle, their bridle, their boots and bandages, their saddle blankets and their, their extra rugs. They also have a rug box outside their stable block, but um, this is more like their competition box. If we're going to a competition, this is the extra stuff that the horse has. So every horse has a saddle, a bridle, a boot bag, saddle blanket. Then we've got extra bridles over here and different, different halters. This is my competition box that I take when I go compete. And of course we have some extra saddles for breakers and different saddles that we use on different horses. This is where I come to every day. So this is my workstation. When I come, I've got to put my boots on, my helmets on, well, helmet, helmets, <laughs> just one helmet, but obviously there's some other people that ride here as well. And um, the most important thing is sugar lumps for my horses. And um, yeah, and then if ever I go, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm getting it. I don't know if I, you know, we all have those kinds of days. I can look up at the rosettes. I can look up at the trophies and I can go, well, you figured it out once, you'll figure it out again. So this is one of my favorite places to be. It's my workplace. This is where I come every day to get my boots on, center myself, get ready for a ride and off I go. Now we've gone from the stable block, I wanna show you to my favorite part of the entire institute. So as, is it Alison? I'm pretty sure it's Alice in Wonderland. Let's go through the rabbit hole. Okay, so as you walk through, um, firstly, you would go, what's the chocolate door? The chocolate door is the bathroom. I just loved this sign and needed to have the chocolate door. So that's the bathroom. Here's just a storeroom, but it reminds me of grease and sun and beautifulness. And I think that's just really cool. Uh, and then I always kind of stick my head out as I go past to just check. We've got the stallions. That's like the stallion section out there. So they're all hanging out. You can only see one at the moment, but I just check. Yep, they're, they're all doing good. And then we walk into the viewing area. So I always knew when I created this place that I wanted to have a place where riders could come and hang out, where riders could come and um, have tea, coffee, something to eat and talk about their rides and watch other lessons and watch other rides happen. So this is the viewing area. No one's here at the moment. We thought we'd do it when no one was around. But yeah, we've got um, riding going on. You can watch the riding. You can 
that's it. We've got all my horse books out in the bookshelf and um, yeah, it's just a great place to hang out. Okay, and this is the office where everyone in your Riding Success headquarters hangs out and this is where the magic happens. So we've got gold, gold everywhere, gold chairs. Uh, we obviously have our poster of our mission statement and everything else that we need to do. This is Phil's door. Phil is inspired by Arnie. Arnie's pretty cool. Like to have succeeded in so many areas, I just think it's really, really cool. And so his Phil's quote is all about, I failed over and over again in my life and that is why I succeed. I needed a unicorn door. Of course I did because it's gold and it's unicorny. And um, my whole... Mission is to be the unicorn. The other cool thing about the office is it has this really, really cool thing that I can see the arena. So uh, they can probably see us, but not very well. It's a tinted glass, so mostly you see is the mirror, which is great because I wanted to have a mirror coming down this way. But if I ever want to see what's going on with the horses or see if um, uh, I've got to go out and give a lesson, then I can go out to the arena and it's all there, ready when I need it. Another sneaky thing this institute has is what everyone needs, a little bit of a gym. Come in and have a look. So most of the things in the gym are actually practical. This is practical but not for not what you think. We have two small kids and when we're in the gym the kids like to just come and play so they get to swing on the rings and on the rope and it's really good for their upper body strength. You may have seen these signs behind me when I was talking before. These signs are again vital for when I'm, this is my workplace, this is where I'm working and sometimes when you're riding horses things aren't going to plan, things aren't going how you want them to be. And the biggest quote in the middle, success equals persistence. That is one of my life philosophies, that is one thing that I believe to be true, that I can have anything I want in this life as long as I don't give up. That's just my thing. So I've had to fill it with people that have gone through, I hope, way worse things than I've ever had to go through. For Colonel Sanders to have a thousand and nine rejections and still keep going and eventually get KFC. Uh, for Walt Disney to be fired from a newspaper because he lacked imagination and to have that, you know, he didn't let that stop him. He was obviously a genius. He obviously had unlimited imagination and he didn't let one person's opinion or one person's view stop him from living his true life and, and going after his dreams. There's so many in here. Michael Jordan, I mean, did, does everyone know that? Michael Jordan was cut from the basketball team, the basketball team, <laughs> for um, a lack of skill. I just, I, whenever I'm worried, whenever I'm concerned, I just look up at my, my wall of greats and I go, well, you know, um, JK Rowling, unemployed while writing her first Harry Potter novel, which was then rejected by 12 publishing houses. So uh, yeah, that's just what keeps me going again. I'm thinking about what does my environment need to do to bolster me up? Not when I'm feeling awesome, not when things are going great, but when things go wrong, how can my environment lift me back up? I, I'm fascinated by horse riders because I feel that we're all attracted to horse riding for a lot of the same reasons. We love horses. We love them for different reasons. For me, I love horses because they give me freedom. They give me a way to express myself that I couldn't express in, you know, by myself. They become my legs. They become my, my movement. They become, you know, and I can get a lot further. I can get a lot faster. I can get a lot prettier when I'm on a horse than when I'm by myself. And this horse allows me to have the world fall away and the, the world disappear and it just becomes one between you and the horse. So that's what I'm obsessed about and that's what I'm obsessed about helping other people achieve. I know there's a lot of people that can be threatened by um, and affected by fear or anxiety or nerves in their riding and I want to help people because that's all created in the mind. It is not just, whoops, I caught. I caught something, like it's not like catching a cold, you don't catch nerves, nerves are created by you, anxiety is created by you, um, fear is created by you and I know that can seem confronting when I say that but that's also a good thing because if it's created by you it can be uncreated by you and it can be 
stopped and it can be changed and it can be modified and it can be used to um, create a new response. So that's what I'm obsessed about. That's what I get out of bed for every single day to help riders break free from whatever's holding them back so they can take their riding to the next level and experience more fun, love, joy, passion, excitement in their riding every single day. And that's what I do. That's what we do here at the Institute. We have FEI horses where people can come and have lessons on so they can experience what a PR feels like, so they can experience um, what a horse really through and connected feels like. Um, we want to give these opportunities to these riders. We want you to feel fun, love, joy and excitement in every moment in your riding and that's what everything here is all about. So very excited to share my story in a little way and very excited to be recording riding videos for the FEI to help you in your riding and to help you get a little bit of insight into take how you could take your riding to the next level. So I trust you enjoyed this video and make sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss any FEI episode of any video and I look forward to releasing a new video soon uh, about how I can help you take your riding and your dressage to the next level.